And welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing on with our epic space battle scene. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the plan today is to take our scene a little bit further. <clears throat> if you remember in the last episode, I was talking about how narrative is super important. And we got to think about narrative. We got to figure out how to tell a story that's going to actually engage our audience and kind of hook them in. Um, I briefly talked about the idea of the front of the ship being like a face. And, and when we show it to the audience, you know, in the beginning of our scene, we're, we're helping the audience connect with the main character of our story, right? So this is like this is like a super pro tip, all right? So if you ever want to make like animated short material, animated short films, whatever, you know, we could like just create these ships and then have them fly around and blow stuff up, but do some lasers and some explosions and be done with it, right? But the thing is, you're not going to engage anyone emotionally, right? It's just going to be this kind of like fun, cool little show off, like, you know, scene thing, which is totally fine. Like that's, that's completely valid. Don't get me wrong. But What's really cool is if you can actually engage your audience and give them a bit of an emotional hook so you can like grab them and, and get them engaged emotionally. That's like, that's next level. So if you can pull that off, that's, that's really good. So that's what we're going to try and do. We're going to try and pull that off. So I want you to just, just like, maybe like if you're watching this video right now, like maybe pause the video, stop and think about how would you get someone to emotionally connect with this scene? We need to find a way to create something in this scene that can evoke some kind of emotional response. Um, and it will enhance our hero character. We're gonna have some danger. We know we've got the spider bot lurking in our asteroid scene somewhere. Today's shot, what I wanna do is have him, have him uh, fire off some kind of projectile thing. Um, and it's gonna be like a little droid. He's gonna fire off like maybe two or three of them. And these little droids are gonna go fly into the scene and start scanning asteroids because they're looking for something. And these uh, these little droids have the ability to to work out what's an asteroid and what's not, because there's something hiding in here this guy knows about. And these little droids, we're going to try and make something that's really cute looking, really kind of empathetic. Um, it has like a really big face kind of thing to it, like an eye, a central eye that that can be expressive. I'm not really sure how we're going to do this yet, um, what it's going to look like. But the idea is to have this expressive little eye. And uh, these guys are going to help us create empathy uh, and uh, give us something to connect with emotionally in the scene. Because right now the face of our ship, it's a pretty stoic face, right? It's not really, uh, so we need something that can be afraid, that can react to what's going on, that can uh, look at the danger and, and be, be scared of the danger because that's, that's how we create empathy in the audience. So if the audience is watching something and they see a character on screen uh, get scared, uh, they're going to feel that fear too. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, so I've saved this scene as a new scene and we're actually going to delete all of our keyframe animation from the last episode. Okay. So uh, fear not, we've got that saved as another project, but um, I just want to start clean. So I'm going to grab all my keyframes, B to box select, and I'm going to hit uh, X to delete. So I'm just going to delete all those guys. All right, now there's no other animation in our scene at this point um, except for the, the warp control. We need to get rid of that. We're actually not going to be using the warp, so we can hit control and then say Alt P to clear the parent. So we've cleared that parent. So now uh, warp control, I can even just delete warp control because we are done with that whole thing. We're also done with warp itself for this project, so I'll delete that. Now it might be helpful when you save your project to save it um, with a file name like, you know, shot shot three or whatever to kind of keep track of what shot you're up to. So one of the things, like I said before, is we're going to keep reusing the scene in different ways. So we've kind of established, we've got these giant asteroids and we've got the sun off in the distance. And they're kind of like our, they orient our audience um, and help our audience to kind of know like what direction we're facing and, and what's going on with that. So what I want to do is just bear that in mind and kind of use these to help shape where the scene's going next. Okay. So let's uh, now come to our cameras and I'm actually going to get rid of my uh, secondary camera. Which one do I want to keep? This one's facing that way. We can get rid of that one. So we'll keep camera 01. And then down here with our markers, I just need to delete those markers as well. So we just have 
we'll just have the one camera and I'll just drag that right over here to frame zero and I'll select all those keyframes and delete them. So now we've got a fresh, clean, empty scene. So let's jump into our camera and let's think about, okay, I want him to be a little bit on the outskirts still, like he's still playing it safe, not fully into the scene yet, just staying at the edge of the asteroids. All right, so we're on the we're on the uh, right hand side of the ship, right? So if you imagine uh, an invisible line traveling through our scene down through the middle, we're on the, the right hand side of our ship. This is called the the 180 degree line. So if you're not familiar with this, this is a film production term where uh, in your editing, um, if you keep the camera on the same side of your actor through the whole scene, then you can help keep them oriented in your edit. Um, and that, that helps like when you're cutting back and forth in different directions, as long as you're staying on the same side of your actor, then uh, it, it helps everyone kind of know, okay, this is where I am. If you just, if, cause they're, they're basically, cause they're looking in the same direction. So right now when we're facing him, he's looking this way to the bottom right of our frame. Okay. So if we cut behind him, you can see we're kind of, well, this is sort of not a great example because we're dead behind. We're like right on the line, but we would want to be either right behind him like this, or we'd want to be over a little bit this way. Okay, so that we're, we're basically staying on the same side of the character. Um, it's sort of like film school 101. If you ever, you know, if anybody's been to film school, it's like the first thing they teach you. Um, handy trick. So we want to think about that. And so what I want to do is I think, so we've got this introduction. I got a shot in my head. I want to see the ship slow down to a stop. And then I want to see him fire off these, these projectiles. So um, I think we need maybe two more shots. We need to have like a slow reveal. Um, maybe we could take our camera. Let's find our camera. Boom, there it is. And I'm going to increase my focal length on this guy. And I wonder if I could get a shot where we kind of like, like have the ship traveling underneath an asteroid. I'll, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll set a keyframe for my camera right here. And I'll just push forward a little bit on the timeline to like frame 100. And I'll just come like this a little bit. And I'll hit I and I. And then let's grab the ship. Uh, here are ship control. I'm also going to get out of lock camera to view. If we jump into the camera with one of these views, and then you keep the other one in this 3D viewport mode, that can really help you. I'm also going to scale that camera up because I just can't see him. Where is he? So here are ship control. Grab that around. You can see I'm like, I'm kind of using this, this, these asteroids in this little scene we've set up as like a, um, a sandbox. Uh, I'm not worried about the fact that we were over here and he was flying straight through like this. This is a new shot. The audience has no idea where we are. You know, they only know what we show them. So we can kind of sculpt out, you know, what we want from each shot. So let's see how this works. I might move it down just a little bit more. Just make sure he's not intersecting this asteroid. Grab him on X. Again, you can see how handy it is knowing that X is the, the, the direction that we're moving in. Um, I'm also going to fix up his rotation. And I think 180 is what the Z needs to be. Yep. So now he's got this nice, clean, straight direction for us. And I'll start him here. And then frame 100. I'll pull him like here. And I want him to come to a stop. So I'll just do that. And we'll see how this looks. And let's go to frame 100. And now we need to just put a little bit more into this shot. So I'm going to lock camera to view. And turn a little bit. Now I'm feeling like the, it's definitely, you can feel the, the slow and start um, interpolation there. So I'm going to jump up to here. I'm going to go to graph editor. Hero ship control, open this up. Now, where are you? Hit A to select all and then the full stop key that'll zoom in and again give you the right view so you can see everything. All right, so I want this, this ship. I've got hero ship control selected. That's right. So I'm going to scale this one down on the X. This is the same as like making it linear interpolated, but it allows me to keep one of these uh, like super soft. I <laughs> cool. It's got a comment. All right, anyways, I was talking about uh, the rotation lines and stuff. So sometimes things appear straight when they actually do have some motion to them. So you can hide with these little eyeballs, you can hide everything except for like just one of them. Then when you hit A, it's only going to select the one that you have selected. If you hit full stop, then it's going to zoom in close enough so you can actually see that there is some curve to it. So that's helpful. Yeah, I think like if we cut right here as it's starting to slow down. So I'm going to add a marker. 
And then I'm going to create a new camera. And then I'm going to bind the camera to the marker. And then I'm going to make sure I have locked my camera to view. And then I'm just going to select my hero ship control and hit the full stop key to zoom to it. And now I'm going to find my shot. And I'm just going to look for like a maybe a cool different shot or something. I want to fire these things out like maybe I was thinking of maybe firing them out of this thing. I haven't actually modeled a specific spot for them to come out from. So I didn't come up with this idea till after. Um, but you know, or maybe even just underneath could work. Uh, I think that's probably the best option. I could have a couple of them like kind of drop out like and then come try this right here. Okay. Where's my camera? You can see I'm staying on the same side of the ship. Okay, I'm going to set a keyframe here, here, and the ship's going to do that, that park. So I'm going to pull back, maybe around a little bit. I'm going to need to drag that out so it's not so. What I'm going to do is I can one little trick is if you have like a harsh stop like this but you kind of like where something is at a certain frame, you can come in like this and uh, set an extra keyframe. And then you can grab this in keyframe here and just like pull it out. And that really slows down the whole thing. Yeah, so that's a much nicer, much nicer shot. Let's take the uh, hero ship. We're going to close up the wings as it slows down. So like from here, I want to see it in, in the shot itself. So um, yeah, like right about here, I think, is where we'll start that. Go to item, down to properties, hit a keyframe for wing fold. And then I'm going to go forward. And then I'll drag that up to one. Hit a keyframe. All right, cool. And I want this shot to kind of keep going. Um, where's my camera? Maybe even up like this. Yeah, that could be a cool shot because we could have the little guys kind of coming out and moving around out here. We're going to animate just some spheres as like placeholders for now. Now, the next thing I'm thinking is in this shot, I feel like we could have a lot more uh, asteroids in the shot itself. I'm going to take asteroid emitter down 003. I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate. And I'll scale it down, grab it on the Z, grab it on the X. And I'm just going to move it until... We get asteroids in the shot. All right, that's pretty sweet. I'm going to bake that one off just for now. Now, the next thing is uh, we need to have a few in the foreground here to create a little bit of depth in our shot. Um, it's overkill, I think, to actually have a, a whole other particle system for that. So I'm just going to use some tiny little extra ones. So I'm just going to go here to my asteroid particles, just pick some at random. I'm going to hit Shift D. I'm going to grab it into the world so it's not a part of my particle systems. And I will just scale it up so I can see it. All right, now I can scale this thing right down. And because it's so close to the camera, I'll even get it closer. I want it like right up in front of, right in front of the camera. You can see that the camera's movement is really accentuated by this guy. Okay, cool. So now let's let's animate the 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 shots being fired out. So um, I'm going to create some spheres, and I want them to start coming out like right about here at this moment. And um, I'll just hit Shift S and go cursor to selected, and now Shift A mesh, and we're going to go for a UV sphere. I'll grab him on the X, shrink him down, grab him on the Z, and I want to think about okay, how big do I want these guys to be? Um, my plan, um, so the plan is I want to have one of these little guys um, basically fly off and there's going to be a point in our little story where uh, one of these guys is going to come back um, and reconnect with the ship and they're going to kind of travel together like once the spider bots show up and start causing trouble, these guys are going to stick together. One of my thoughts was to actually have him uh, like somehow latch on to the wing. So I think this size looks pretty good. That's a good size. All right, so I don't so I don't lose this size. What I'm going to do is apply the scale. So I've got this scale set to like 0.216. I want this to be ones because I want this to be like the the base size for this. I don't want to set this as one for the location. So I'm just going to apply 
object properties for just the scale. So I'm just going to go uh, F3 and apply object transform. And I'm going to open up the little box before clicking away. I'm going to turn off location and then I'm going to turn off rotation and I'm going to also get rid of my properties. So just want the scale applied. Cool. All right. Let's find this thing in our hierarchy and let's give it a name. We'll call this our um, scanner bot. We have spider bots and scanner bots in this scene. So let's jump back into our camera to see the shot. And so we're kind of coming right around here. Boom. And then this is the moment. So let's go ahead and set a keyframe. I'll drag this back up and I will set an I keyframe for my location. I'll go forward a little bit and then I'll go down like this. Maybe, yeah, just straight down, I think. And I'll hit another keyframe. All right, cool. Let's do a cute couple of these in quick succession. So I'm going to hit Shift D. And with this one selected, I'm going to grab these keyframes and just move them forward a little bit. Now we should have two, boom, boom, shift D again, speed and pacing. So let's get that right. Um, I could line them up like this might be a bit too slow though. Let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah. I feel like it needs to be a little faster. So let's grab these guys and we'll move in maybe two frames like that. Yeah, that feels right. So we'll come forward and then yeah, right about there, scanner bot one is going to come up and I'm going to know why. All right. Let's see what that looks like. Just kind of playing around. Okay. And all the keyframes are, um, they're still set to linear. So I need to switch the interpolation to Bezier there. And that'll smooth out their motion. And I think I want to st start it off kind of like down further. So another keyframe there. I'll set this one to Bezier as well. Yeah, cool. That's sweet. It goes off into the distance. And we'll grab the next one. We'll do the same thing. This nice like parallax motion is super cool. Like this is how you make stuff feel like it's a movie. If you've got like, see how my camera is rotating around and, and I'm getting the, the, the background stuff is moving against the foreground stuff really well. And then the center focus, these little dudes here, um, they're really drawing the eye and the eyes kind of moving contrary to the motion of the camera, if that makes sense. I don't know. It's, it's a really great trick. Um, and we're getting that, of course, with that zoomed in focal length, uh, being a bit more punched in. All right, let's get the next. Next one going, scanner bot, scanner bot. Uh, right, this guy, let's put him. So I have the first one goes up and then I'll go ahead and hit a keyframe for the second one here. And I'll right click interpolate, interpolate Bezier so that all the following ones are Beziers. And now I'm gonna grab him up on the Z. I might bring this one in front of the camera. Like he's heading off this way. That'll give us a moment to kind of see what we're looking at. Get this little guy kind of come up and zoom off like that. I feel like he would zoom off a bit quicker. Yeah. So with this bad motion path three feels a bit jerky. A really great way to kind of smooth those kinds of problems out is to switch over to your graph editor and uh, have a look at what the motion is looking like. So I'm going to select all and I'm going to hit the full stop key. And in fact, I'm going to even drag up. And what you can see is um, if I select all, you get this nice gradual curve, but there's sometimes you get these little bumps and there's also bits that you think may not be entirely necessary because this represents the motion of this object through 3D space on the Y, the X and the Z. So like, for example, this curve right here, it might be a little smoother if I got rid of these two keyframes, right? So I can click those two guys and hit delete keyframes. Now I've lost a bit of the dip there. So what I might want to do is just grab this handle and drag it out a little bit and uh, just make sure it's curved well. And now it's going to be a lot smoother. So I can do the same here. I can delete those keyframes and then I can grab this one out. And you'll see just by simplifying these curves, what we end up with is a lot smoother, a lot smoother animation. So let's preview that. Yeah, you can see it feels a whole lot cleaner. All right, well, let's get some good light for this. 
So um, we may have to light both these shots separately. I'm going to grab the first light here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hide both of them to get a sense of what they're doing. So yeah, I think just the angle of this one is not great. So I'm going to rotate, rotate around on one of these axes to see what we can find. It's a little bit better. So what I'm looking for is creating contrast, you know, nice brights with nice darts. Right now, like our ship is the, this really flat um, land looking thing, which is not, not fun. So um, we get around that by getting a really good angle on our light. All right. I want to take my jets that I've animated and uh, that's in my shader view. Find my ship and select my jet material. So I've just keyframed the strength. I don't think I had that in the last episode. I think I did it afterwards, maybe. But that's all you got to do to do that. And I'll reverse these so that he comes in. Maybe even sooner because he slows down a bit sooner. It's a nice kind of visual cue for... Um, that he's slowing down, you know. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create um, kind of a fire burst uh, underneath the ship. So as these little capsules are firing out of our ship, we want to have this like, you know, exhaust plume that like, you know, jets out. So we want to put them in the exact same position as where these guys are firing out from. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hit Shift S and cursor to select it. And then we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to create a cone. Okay, let's take a cone right there. Now we're going to rotate on the X 180 just to flip it around and we'll grab it down a little bit and scale it and jump back into our camera view, scale it down a little bit more. And I want to find a frame where I've got one of these guys intersecting it because I want to be able to see both kind of together. Now I'm going to right click on this and click shade smooth and I'm going to go to my wrench and add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to make sure that the render and viewport line up as well. And uh, yeah, now we're going to create a shader that kind of creates this cool burst effect. And uh, we're going to create a new material here for this guy. And uh, we'll call this, um, let's see, burst fire, maybe. Why not? And uh, over here in the shader itself, just swing over, get a good view so we can actually see stuff, switch to rendered view, and we're going to create um, a, an emission shader. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to create an emission shader with some transparency to it so we get this like burst exhaust look kind of thing going on. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's set up um, a transparent uh, shader and a mix shader. And we're going to plug the transparent BSDF in there, plug this one in there. We might need to flip them. I always forget. And uh, right now they're just, you know, mixing, blending evenly. So let's see, we turn it off. Now, of course, it's EV, so we have to go up to options. In blend mode, we need to set to alpha blend. And shadow mode, we can just set to none because we don't want this thing to really be worrying about shadows. All right, now let's uh, let's get some let's get some stuff going on. So let's go ahead and grab a, I wanna kind of have it fade off as it gets further away. So it's like the intense blast is here and then the exhaust burns off. So let's grab a gradient node to pull that off. So gradient texture. We're also gonna need a texture coordinate node, typing one handed texture coordinate node and a mapping node. There it is. <clears throat> All right, so it's gonna, we're gonna pipe that in there to generate it and let's take the vector and we'll stick that into there and now uh, gradient texture we're going to stick this into the color of our mission all right now we're going to try and find the gradient all right um actually the easiest way to find it is to first figure out where it is um in conjunction to oh yeah there we go so we just keep moving it until we actually get um the gradient to appear and then it's easier to figure out which which way you need to rotate it so yeah we're going to go negative 90. And then we can just drag it up a little bit until, there we go. That looks good. All right, now we're going to uh, switch from linear to, oh no, wait, yeah, we'll keep it on linear. That'll be fine. I might turn on back face culling for this. I think that might help it. We'll see. Um, all right, now let's, um, let's create a uh, color ramp and we'll pipe this right here. And we're just going to bring this one in. I'm going to give it kind of like a bluish color, nice and saturated. Drag that right up here. And then I'm going to create another one right here at the end. Actually, I'll take this one because that one was darkened. And I'm going to 
drag it up. I'm going to turn my saturation all the way off so it's just pure white there. And then I might put another one in between and I'll switch this to ease as well just to kind of make it a little more gradual. And then I'm going to pipe my strength way up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also use this color as my factor for the mix shader. Um, and you can see now where it's where the emission goes black, it's also going transparent. Um, so that's nice. Jump back into our camera view because we need to always be looking at our camera view to make sure we're you know actually affecting what we're going to be seeing in the shot. You don't want to do work on things that you aren't actually going to see. All right, let's go ahead and put some noise into this. So we're going to create a noise shader, noise texture. There it is. And uh, let's grab, um, we'll create another vector mapping node. And uh, we'll just set the location back to zero and the rotation back to zero. We'll stick generate it into the vector, vector into the vector. And then we're going to take this noise guy and we're going to multiply him, I think, into here. So let's go ahead and go mix RGB. And we'll take the color, the color. We'll go multiply and we'll take the color. Or actually, we won't probably want the factor because I want it to be black and white. I don't know if the color values will affect it think they will but i'm just going to play it safe and i'll turn this all the way up to one so now we're getting this nice nice effect here where it's starting to break up because of that noise texture now the other thing we want is see how it's it's really defined along the edges we want this to fade off as it goes along the edge because i want it to be be more like a cloud kind of shape you know not a not so hard edged so i'm going to uh create um a, a layer uh weight node Layer weight node is a lot like the Fresnel node, which Fresnel is the technique where uh, whatever faces are facing away from the camera are shaded differently to ones that are facing right towards the camera, so the actual geometry of the object. The layer weight just gives you a little bit different controls and it's not like scientifically accurate, um, but it gives you sometimes a better artistic result. Um, that's how that, how that works. So let's uh, take this guy and um, we're actually gonna use another transparent um, shader, transparent, and another mix shader. Um, this might be overkill doing it as a, a double step, but I don't mind a bit overkill. All right, let's take facing and we want to um, pipe that in there. And then we can turn this up and you can see it's going to start to fade away towards the edges. So 0.9 gives us a nice look. Maybe 0.95 is a little bit better. And then we can turn up our emission strength even more. Really get that to glow, shine for us. And then I might just adjust my my colors a little bit. Um, maybe even take the location of this thing up a bit more. All right, cool. So now let's find the exact frame where one of these things appears. So there we go. Um, I'll scale it up so it kind of encompasses it. All right. And now what we can do is we can animate this thing by uh let's see i want to use a we're going to use a mix shader so when this is um set to one we're getting full this shader so all transparent bsdf when it's zero we're getting all of this other one so um plug this back in if we want it to disappear we want to add we want to basically get this number up to one so if i go uh, mix rgb i can stick this here and i can switch to add and then make this white and it's basically add the number one is what I'm saying. Now I need to clamp it because you can see we're getting really weird effects. It's because we're getting to a number that's beyond one. So clamping it's going to restrict it to being one. So now I can just fire that thing off. That looks pretty good. So what we'll do is when the things appeared, when the balls appeared, I'll hit I there to set a keyframe. And then I'll go back to three frames and set it to one and hit I again. So it's sort of like that firing. And then we'll take that back to one and hit I. And let's just preview what that looks like. It's pretty cool. It's a bit too slow, I think. And I don't like that it's sort of coming up like this. I might just bring it in a little bit. So right now, I'm not liking the fall off of this thing, like to the, uh, the, way, it's, the way it's sort of just kind of appearing. It's, it's a bit harsh. So I want to create more of a, a gradual fall off. I want to, instead of just using the color of this to drive the factor for mixing this transparent in, I want to actually use a different color ramp, one that's more of a, a gradual black and white value. So I'm going to grab another color ramp. And uh, what I'll do is I'll take the color of this one and I'll bring it in. And I'll bring the color of this and I'll bring it into the factor. So we're no longer just using this, we're using this. And um, this little bit of extra fall off is going to help us out, I think, a lot. So if we look at it, yeah, it looks a lot better now. Might even bring this up a touch. 
No, nope, not that much. Can we bring this down? Let's find it. There it is. All right, great. So now that we've got this thing firing, let's line up all the other um, fires as well. So we'll find the next frame where the next one appears. So our first one shoots out here. So I can just box select those keyframes, shift D, and bring it over and line up that middle one. And then the second one fires. And then the third one fires here. Three shots. I might even just throw on, actually, you know what? I'm just going to throw on one of the, one of the shaders uh, from my hero spaceship. And there we go. I hope you found this episode really interesting and exciting and you learned a lot. Um, got some new tools in your toolbox ready to use uh, next project you jump into. Thanks again for watching and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe the video if you're into it. Um, if you ring the bell, you'll get uh, notifications when a new one launches. I'll try and launch one every week and try and do it as a premiere so I can be there and chat. So please join us there. Join us on the Discord. We've got a great little community going and check out the Patreon, especially if you want to get the uh, tutorials on how to make the Hero Spaceship and the Spider Bots from this series. I've got those there as well as the project files. So you can go over and check that out as well as uh, have a look at the Blender Marketplace. We've got some cool stuff over there too. Stuff everywhere. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying this epic space battle and are excited about where things are going. Anyways, stay tuned and I will catch you in the next episode. Have a great week. Bye.